Everyone, my name is Dave, this is Custom Spray Mods, and in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 spray painting and dent repair tips and tricks that'll help you get an awesome finish when you're painting. Check it out. Okay, so I've got this WRX bonnet. Uh, I've sold my WRX, but I had a spare bonnet. I had a spare hood. Um, it had a dent in it, so I decided to fix the dent and paint it a different color. Now I'm gonna go through that in this video, and along the way, uh, I'll show you different, some different tips and tricks to get an awesome finish. So yeah, let's get started. So the first tip is if you have a panel that might have a dent in it, a great way to locate the dent is to use some guide coat, just some black spray paint, then get a block and some sandpaper, and when you sand the panel, it will expose a low spot. Because the block is flat, it's going to sand all the paint off except what is low. And then you'll be able to see where the dent is and how big it is. Now that I know where the dent is, I'm going to sand it with 150 grit sandpaper and that's going to etch the surface and allow my body filler to stick. I'm going to clean with some wax and grease remover, spraying on and wiping off. Tip number two is when mixing body filler, make sure you don't put too much hardener into the mix. The hardener has a peroxide in it and it can actually bleed through the primer and the paint. So you can do your repair and primer it and paint it and then you'll still see a small dot of a ring of uh, body filler because that peroxide has bled through the paint and no matter how many layers of primer or paint you put on there, you'll still see that body filler on the panel. So don't use too much hardener. If you want it to dry quicker, try and use some heat, like a heat gun. The third tip when using body filler is to make sure you smooth your edges. You don't want to leave any hard edges on the body filler because that's going to make it a lot harder to sand. If the edges are smooth, then it's going to make it a lot easier to sand that filler. Now I'm using 80 grit and a block and going to sand that body filler. Because the block is flat, it's going to uh, sand the top of the filler off and basically leave the filler in the dent and get that correct shape. Now before we put primer, it's important to step up the grits till we get to 240 grit. So I've started with 80, now I'm going to go 150 grit and then finish with 240 grit. Tip number four is to make sure you use a high build primer. So as you can see, this dent has body filler in it but it also looks like there's a little bit of a low spot still there around the dent. Now this is where a high build primer will help level that area and get a nice smooth finish. So I've prepared the area, I'm gonna spray with wax and grease remover, then I'm gonna spray a 2K high build primer. If you're doing this job with 1K products, then you would use a primer, then a spray putty, then sand the spray putty, and then use primer again. Now I'm gonna spray three coats of high build primer and then wait 15 minutes between coats. Then I'll let that dry overnight and I'll be ready to start sanding again. Now that the primer is dry, I've sprayed some more guide coat and I'm sanding it with some 400 grit wet sandpaper. I'm using some water. I'm going to sand the area nice and smooth with 400 grit wet. Then I'll move on to a finer grit. because I have an air sander, I'm going to finish sanding with the air sander. And I'm using 400 grit and an interface pad. So the interface pad is a soft backing that makes it so it's, uh, it gives me soft edges on the sander. And the 400 grit on the air sander, because it's spinning and oscillating, it actually equals to about 800 grit sanding by hand. So I'm getting a nice, fine sandpaper finish. This is going to help my new paint stick and I'm not going to see any scratch marks, especially if I'm using a metallic paint. Before painting the base coat, it's a good idea to use a tack rag. This can get rid of any dust that might have landed on the panel before you start painting. Now I'm going to spray four coats of base coat, waiting 10 minutes between coats. So 
next tip is about mixing clear coat. It's very important to test the viscosity of the clear. Uh, on every tin, it should have a number, a time, and uh, using a viscosity cup and measuring the amount of time it takes for that clear to run through the viscosity cup will make sure you have the correct viscosity of clear. That is basically how thick or thin the clear is, um, how it's gonna flow, and it's gonna perform the best if it's the best viscosity. Another tip when spray painting is to try and minimize dust landing in your paint job. A good idea is to place the panels in a vertical position. This basically minimizes the surface area that dust can fall onto the panel. That's gonna make it harder for the dust to land on the panel. A great tip to minimize runs in your clear coat is to, on your first coat of clear, move the gun quite quick. Don't worry too much about getting a super wet finish on your first coat. Once that first coat is down and tacky, you can move on to your second coat and you can actually go a lot slower with your spray gun movement on your second coat. Because that first coat is nice and tacky, that second coat is going to grab onto that first coat and it's going to minimize any runs. And this will give you a nice smooth wet finish. Now the job's painted and I've left it for about two days and as you can see I've got quite a bit of dust still in the job so I'm going to start sanding that out. I'm using 1500 grit 3M disc on this 3 inch air sander and I'm basically just going to go over, sand all the dust out and then I'll start buffing those scratches out. So another tip when sanding clear coat is a lot of people think that you need to go 1500 grit, then 2000 grit, then 3000 grit, then 5000 grit. Well, if you're good with the buffing machine and you know your compounds and pads, you can buff out 1500 grit sandpaper and not see any scratch marks at all. This is gonna save quite a bit of time. So if you get good with the buffing machine, if you know your compounds and pad combination, you can save a lot of time by just buffing out 1500 grit sandpaper marks and you'll still get a nice, smooth, scratch-free finish. A tip when buffing clear coat is that the clear coat is quite resilient. Uh, if you have your buffing machine flat on the panel, then it's going to take a long time and a lot of pressure to actually burn through the clear. So don't be scared to uh, go really slow with the buffing machine, especially the coarse compound and a woolen pad uh, on a flat surface. You have quite a bit of time before you actually burn through that clear. On your edges, you do need to be careful, but on flat, panel on a flat surface, it will take a long time before you actually burn through that clear. So go nice and slow and let the machine, pad and compound do its job and remove those scratches. So I've completely removed the scratches with the first buff. Now I'm using a Roops Bigfoot machine and a medium pad with some medium compound and I'm using a soft pad with some fine compound to finish off the job and get rid of any scratch or swell marks from the original buff. Finally, when you are buffing scratches out, um, if you have used sandpaper, it's important to look at the panel from all different angles and in different lights because you might have a scratch-free finish in some angle and some light, but then you move the panel and you look at it in a different light and you can see those scratches again. So before you move on to your step two, it's always important to make sure you get all those sandpaper scratches out with your step one compound and polish. Well, there you go. I hope that could clear up any questions you have about spray painting, uh, any kind of problems you might be having, and hopefully help prevent any problems that you could have next time you're spray painting. So yeah, just you know, a few little tips and tricks can make the job heaps easier.
Uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. Um, yeah, uh, I was painting this, I was testing out a spray gun, the Devilbus DV1. So I've got a video uh, review of that. You can check that out as well. I'll put the link in the description. Otherwise, um, check out my Instagram, Facebook pages, and website, and I'll see you next time.